Hello students. In the last session, we have started with the chapter number 7 that is getting to know plants. What are the different topics that we have studied in our previous session? We have studied that we see many plants around us. Do all the plants appear same? No. Some of the plants are smaller in size while some of the plants are taller. The leaves of the different plant varies according to their shape, size and color. We can see the differences in the flowers. Some of the plants have the huge flowers while some of the plants have the tiny ones. We can see the variation in the color of the flowers. Then we have studied the difference between herbs, shrubs and trees. What are herbs? Herbs are the plant that are short in size. The stem of such plants are tender and green in color. The branches may or may not be seen in herbs. Example of the herbs are coriander plant, mint plant, tomato plant, etc. Then we have studied about the shrubs. What are shrubs? In shrubs, the stem is hard but not thick. The branches can be seen at the base of the stem. Example are rose plant tulsi plant etc. Then we have studied about the trees. What are trees? Trees are taller in size. The stem is hard and thick and the branches is seen in the upper part of the stem. Examples of the trees are coconut tree, mango tree etc. We have also studied about the creepers and the climbers. What are creepers? The creepers are the plant in which the stem is not hard, the stem is weak. And we see that the creepers grow on the ground. They spread, they creep on the ground. Example of the creepers are cucumber, watermelon, pumpkin, etc. Then we have studied about the climbers, the plants that take the support and grow upwards. Example, money plant. Then we have studied the function of the stem. What is the function of the stem? Stem helps in the conduction of water and minerals from the ground to the parts of the plant that are attached to the stem like leaves, fruits, flowers, branches, buds, etc. We have also studied the activity that shows that the stem conduct water in the upward direction. I hope all the points, all the topics that we have studied in our previous session are understood to you. So, in today's session, we will study about the leaf. In our last session also, we have seen that the different plants have the different leaves. The leaves of the different plants varies according to their shape, size and color. We have seen that some of the plants have a small leaf. Why some of the plants have a bigger leaf? Even the shape and the color of the leaves varies according to the plant. So, in this session, we will study about the leaf and the different parts of the leaf. We have seen that the leaf is attached to the stem. So, the part of the leaf that is attached to the stem is called as a petiole. 
so the petiole is that part of the leaf that which is attached to the stem and the broad green part of the leaf that we see is called as a lamina so the green part of the leaf is called as a lamina now again we will perform an activity to study the different parts of the leaf for this put a leaf under a white sheet of a paper or a sheet in your notebook to perform this activity what you have to do is you have to put a leaf under the white sheet of the paper hold your pencil tip sideways and rub it on the portion of the paper having the leaf below it that is you just have to trace the leaf on the paper you will see the lines on the leaf are called as a veins the lines that are visible on the leaf are called as a veins and in the middle of the leaf a prominent line is visible a different line that line is called as a midrib so what is a midrib a prominent line in the middle of the leaf is called as a midrib the design made by the veins in the leaf is called as a leaf venation so what are what is the leaf venation the design that you see that are made by the veins is called as a leaf venation you can observe there are two types of leaf venation if the design is a net like on both the side of the midrib if a net like structure a regular structure of the veins is seen this kind of the venation is called as a reticulate venation so what is the irregular or the net like venation called reticulate venation if the veins are parallel to one another this is called as a parallel venation if the veins are parallel so such type of veins are called as a parallel venation reticulate venation is seen in rose plant tulsi plant while the parallel venation is seen in banana plant in grasses in the image you can see how the parallel venation looks like now in this image you can see what is a midrib veins lamina and the petiole so this is the structure of the leaf leaf contains midrib veins and lamina and veins is of two type reticulate venation that is irregular or the net like veins and parallel venation is when the veins appears parallel to each other such type of venation is called as a parallel venation now let us study the another activity in this activity we are going to study the transpiration process that is carried out by the leaf so Let's see what are the requirements to carry out this activity. To carry out this activity, we will require herb, two transparent polyethylene bags, and a thread. Activity is carried on during the daytime on a sunny day. So the activity is carried out on a sunny day. We will use a healthy, well-watered plant. that has been growing in the sun what we have to do is enclose a leafy branch of the plant in the polyethylene bag and tie its mouth and keep it in the sun so what we have to do is we have to take a plant and enclose a leafy branch of that plant with the polyethylene bag and keep it it for few hours after few hours observe the inner surface of the cover what do you see are there any droplets of water so after few hours 
what you will see inside the surface of the cover will there be any droplets of water yes there will be the fine droplets of water inside the cover why we are able to see the fine droplets of water this is because the water comes out of the leaf in the form of water vapor and this process is called as a transpiration so what is transpiration transpiration is the process in which the water comes out of the leaf in the form of water vapor there are fine pores on the surface of the leaf from where the water comes out during the transpiration process the plant releases a lot of water in the air from where do the leaves get this water we have seen that the water is supplied to the leaves by the stem from the roots so from the ground the stem conducts or transport the water to the leaf and during the transpiration process the water comes out of the leaves in the form of water vapor now let us study the another activity for this activity we will require leaf spirit a beaker test tube burner water a watch glass and an iodine solution let's see how this activity is been carried out we have to take a leaf in a test tube and pour a spirit to completely immerse the leaf take the leaf and put it in the test tube to this add the spirit solution till the leaf get completely immersed in the spirit solution now place the test tube in a beaker half filled with water heat the beaker till all the green color from the leaf comes out into the spirit in the test tube now you have to take the test tube and put it, place it in a beaker which is half filled with water we have to heat the beaker till all the green color or the green pigment from the leaf comes out in a spirit so as the green color or the green pigment will come out the spirit will turn green in color and the leaf will become colorless take out the leaf carefully and wash it in it with water now we have to take out the leaf and we have to carefully wash it it with water place the leaf on the watch glass and pour some iodine solution over it what will happen if we will pour the iodine solution over it the color of leaf will become blue black why this happens the blue black color signifies that the leaf contains starch in it do you remember in our second chapter we have carried out the test for the detection of starch in that we have used a potato and the iodine solution when the iodine solution was put on the potato the color of the potato was changed to blue black color which means that it contains starch in it same way when the leaf when the color of the leaf turns blue black that means the leaf contains starch in it so the potatoes get their starch from their leaf and store it so the leaf supplies the starch to the potatoes now let's see how do the leaves prepare their food leaves prepare their food in the presence of sunlight and a green colored substance present in them 
so for preparing the food the leaves require sunlight and a green colored substance what the green colored substance is known as the green colored substance is known as a chlorophyll that is required for required by the leaf to prepare their food leaves also use the water and the carbon dioxide for preparing their food oxygen is released is given out in this process so the process in which the leaves prepare their food is known as photosynthesis process during the photosynthesis process leaves use water and carbon dioxide to prepare their food while they release oxygen during this process the food is prepared by the leaf is ultimately gets stored in the different parts of the plant so the leaf prepare the food and store them in the different parts of the plant the stem supplies leaf with the water we have seen that the leaf required water and carbon dioxide for the for the preparation of food from where do they get the water the stem supplies the leaf with the water the leaf uses the water to make the food the leaves also lose water through the transpiration and during the transpiration process the leaves lose the water so in this session we have studied about the leaf first we have studied about the different structure of the leaf we have seen the leaf contains petiole what is petiole petiole is the part of leaf that is attached to stem then we have seen lamina the broad green portion of the leaf is known as a lamina leaf also contains veins veins are of two types reticulate venation and the parallel venation can be seen in the leaf what is reticulate venation when the distribution of the veins is irregular or the net like it is known as a reticulate venation and when the veins are parallel to each other they are known as parallel venation we have also seen about the midrib what is midrib the prominent line that we can see in the middle of the leaf is known as midrib then we have seen the various activities which shows the transpiration process in the leaf the leaf contains starch and we have seen the photosynthesis process by which the leaf prepare their own food i hope you have understood the concept of the leaf so we will continue with this chapter in our next session